The following program is brought to you by Rogers Anyplace TV. Enjoy exclusive content for free. Visit RogersAnyplaceTV.com. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the premiere episode of the Flyers All Access Show right here on Rogers TV. I'm your host, Matt Malloy, and for the next 30 minutes, I am going to bring you up to speed on everything surrounding the Gander Flyers. And I'm also going to update you with the latest stats and standings from the Newfoundland and Labrador Senior Hockey League. I'm also going to sit down for a feature interview with the man responsible for bringing senior hockey back to Gander the Flyers GM and President, Gary White. We have all of your highlights. We have all of your interviews. We have everything that you need to prepare for this weekend's set of hockey action. So right now, we're going to take it to the first set of highlights. This comes from the October 27th game featuring the Gander Flyers versus the Grand Falls Windsor Cataracts from the Joe Burns Stadium in Grand Falls. It was tough going for the Flyers in Grand Falls. As you can see right here, we have Dougie Hardeman getting stopped by A.J. Whiffin. That was one of many saves for Whiffin on the night. And right here, we have Cody Roach being stopped by Flyers goalie Patty O'Brien. But the Cats were able to open the scoring right here with a goal from Andre Gill. That got things going for the Cataracts. After that, we have a power play goal that's coming up right now from Luca Lamp. Big shot from the point that beat O'Brien. That made it 2-0 for the Cataracts. And right here, we're going to see their third goal, thanks to Mike Sibley with another slap shot that beat O'Brien. In the second, we're going into the second period now. The Cats get another one on a five on three power play. Here comes Luke Gallant, there's the pass, here's a shot right there. The Cats won, five nothing. The Joe was anything but friendly to the Flyers on the, on the 27th, but the following day on the 28th, the Flyers and the Cats played their second game of their home and home set in Gander at the Gander Community Center. After being shut out by the Cats five nothing on the previous night, Grant Donovan of the Flyers found the back of the net just 12 seconds in. But, as you're going to see by the next highlight package, the 12 second goal was not the highlight of this game. Here's the highlights. Uh, Speaking of that 12 second goal, it's going to come up shortly, courtesy of Grant Donovan. We're going to see him really soon pick the puck up in the slot, and here it comes right there. Donovan picks it up and slides it by a whiff to make it one to nothing. A little later on, on the power play with the score tied one to one, we're going to watch Ryan Matheson fire a wrist shot right by a whiffin right there. That made it 2-1. to one. And now in the second period, the game is tied 2-2 two to two right here when Shane Bolin slides it right by a whiffin to make it 3-2 to two for the Flyers. The Cats tied it up in the third. We went to a shootout. There's Sean Wadden making it one nothing for the Flyers. But that was the only goal that the Flyers could get past Whiffin. He was great in the shootout. But that was all the Flyers could muster. They still get that one point out of that, uh, out of that tie. And we're going to see these two teams battle again this weekend when the Cats come together for a pair of games on Saturday and Sunday. The October 27th and the 28th games were the third and fourth games of the season for our Gander Flyers. And after those four games, the Flyers have collected an 0-3-1 record, which puts them fifth in the NLSHL standings. The Flyers are only three points back of the Western Royals, who currently hold that fourth and final playoff spot. As you can tell by the graphic on your screen, the Grand Falls Windsor Cataracts hold the top spot with eight points, thanks to their perfect 4-0 record, followed by the Clarenville Caribous, who dropped a weekend set to the Royals, and they have seven points. The East Link uh, CB Stars sit in third place with six points, followed by the Royals with four, and the Flyers with one. Speaking of those league-leading cataracts, those boys are going to be back here in Gander this weekend for a game on Saturday and Sunday. Saturday's game is at 7.30, Sunday's is at 1.30. And following those two games, after 120 minutes of hockey is played, the Flyers are going to hope that this next list has much higher numbers. And of course, that list is going to be our top goal scorers for the Flyers. And Sean Wadden from St. John's currently leading the way after four games played with three, followed by three players who are tied with two, including Shane Bolin. We have Grant Donovan and Steve Pearson. And as we go down the list, we have Brad Slaney, Andrew White, and eight players 
are tied with at least one point. Now from the Flyers top point getters, we're going to take you to the league leaders shortly, but not right yet. What I want to tell you guys, I want everybody to look at a common theme among our league leaders. They seem to be packaged together very, very well. So, and following that, we're going to show you the top goaltenders in the league so far this season. So we'll get the boys to put that graphic up for you guys right now. And have a look at that. The top four players, all Caribou players, being led by Dale Sullivan, who has 11 points, followed by his teammates Andrew Sweetland, Matt Bragg, and Mark Robinson, who has eight points. Below those guys, we have some CBs players there. Keith Delaney has eight points. Andre Gill has seven from the Cataracts. He actually leads the league in goals with six. Then we have Ray Dalton of the CBs. Jordan Escott, a former flyer, he has seven points. Mark Robinson of the Royals has six. And 10th is the Cataracts player, Brandon Nicholas, who has five points. And now have a look at this. Look at A.J. Whiffen's numbers. After four games played, A.J. Whiffen, look at that save percentage, 0.952. That's tops in the league by far. He leads the league and wins with four. And that's followed by Jason Churchill. He's a man who knows a thing or two about winning Herders and Allen Cups. He currently is second with three wins, followed by the CB's goaltender, Charles Levine, who also has three. Then we have two goaltenders, both from the Royals, who have one win each. That's Doug Dewar and Brad Dyke. And then we have a bunch of goalies who are still looking for that first win of the season. They include Roger Kennedy of the Caribous. That includes Devin O'Brien of the Caribous. And the Flyers' two goaltenders, Patty O'Brien and Greg Bercy. So, the big question is now, what's it going to take for the Flyers to beat A.J. Whiffen this weekend? And that's probably a question that we could toss out to Gary White when he joins me here in about five or six minutes or so. But first, what we're going to do, we're going to bring up some interviews with you, for, uh, for you that I did first with Spencer Corcoran, one of the newest defensemen for the Gander Flyers. He made his debut over the October 27th, 28th weekend. And following that interview, I'm going to play a clip for you where I was talking to Flyers head coach, Mr. Dennis Lang. Take a look. Okay, Spencer, um, I guess this is your big debut with the Gander Flyers. Uh, just give us your thoughts of the first two games that you played here so far with this new team. I, uh, I enjoy playing. You know, there's a great group of young guys playing with us, and uh, they work hard, you know. May not be the best players out there, but we all work hard and uh, get, get along great, so it's working out good. Uh, on Saturday evening, Spencer, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the Flyers last that game 5 to nothing. but you guys came out uh, really hot on this game in the first period. You guys came out with that quick goal. Uh, eventually, uh, the Cats tied it up, and uh, they sent it to a shootout. Uh, just give me your thoughts on this game, because it seems like the Flyers really played a lot better this game than what they did last night. Yeah, the, well, the fans, for one, have been great in Gander. You know, they've been talking about it for the last couple of weeks, and I've seen it today. And uh, we just didn't uh, take any stupid penalties. We are disciplined. You know, a couple odd calls, but uh, you've got to expect those in a game. Exactly. Uh, so, Spencer Red, what is this team doing so well right now? I mean, like I said before, uh, when the boys played the CBs, they played, they played hard, and uh, I guess today, too, they also played hard. What are some of the positives that you're seeing so far from the Gander Flyers? Just a young group that wants to play hockey, you know. It's not about the money with some teams, you know, and uh, we're just out here playing hockey, having fun, and uh, everyone's enjoying it. It's a great group of guys, organization, a great town. Uh, and also, too, Spencer, uh, um, just as a new guy, what are some of the, I guess, adjustments that you have to make when you come into a first team like this? I, uh, not, not too much, really. I jumped in. I knew a few of the boys, so uh, it worked out well. Um, all the guys were friendly, so, you know, chemistry obviously has some things to do with it. You're used to playing with different sorts of guys, and uh, it's going to take a couple weekends, but I think we're going to be all right. Perfect, Spencer. Uh, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Coach, uh, well, that's another weekend in the books. Uh, I know on, uh, on Saturday evening you guys lost 5-0. It uh, seemed like this game you guys came out and played a lot better. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we, first of all, uh, just give us your thoughts on the first two games. I think we played a pretty good game last night in Grand Falls, the first game, you know. And, uh, uh, like you get to the first period against Grand Falls and their home backs, you know, you're doing well. And we played really well in the second period, and we got caught on a couple of penalties late in the period that really, really did us in, really, in last night's game. Third period. You know, we, we played pretty good, too, in the third period out there, and they only scored, like, one goal on us then, right? So we had enough chances then. And I think today was, um, you know, we're playing at home. Shannon showed it, you know. Uh, Spencer's definitely uh, uh, added plus on defense, and Patty played well in the net. 
you know, and the defense played, you know, uh, a lot better, you know. So, uh, you know, we, I thought we played pretty well. We, you know, like uh, uh, Grand Falls got a really good team, you know. So you got to have a lot of respect for them, you know. Exactly. When you can tie them and lose in a shootout, you know, that's not bad, you know. And of course, too, Coach, uh, uh, Spencer is brand new. Uh, just talk about some of the things that Spencer is going to bring to this team this season. Well, he's a solid defenseman, right? Very solid defenseman. He doesn't panic with the puck, strong, you know. And he's played the game before, you know, so he'll bring the leadership too, right? Exactly. And well, I want to say leadership, he's only 23 years old, so, you know, he's not that old, you know, but he, he's got the nice stability side of it, you know, we probably need because we got, uh, we got young guys coming out of junior, you know, so with Ryan, these guys, you know, so he'll bring uh, that bit of character to it, you know. I think I'm really impressed with him, and uh, I think he fits in with us with the uh, in the dressing room. Exactly. Know? And coaches, uh, it seemed to me, um, um, uh, that uh, Patty O'Brien, sorry, he really stepped up his game today. Uh, yeah. I'm wondering if he uh, maybe took over that uh, starting position. Do you think? Well, Patty is uh, excellent. Played excellent for us. We can play well last weekend too, and even he came in. So you know, I'm quite pleased with him. Uh, I have no problem to put him in. You know, and he's uh, achieved a pretty good. You know, and I think he he deserves the uh, starts. You know, because he played well. So, you know, when you stop 40 shots in Grand Falls, you're doing good. You know? You're doing good, exactly. Uh, Coach, is it possible for you just to talk about that Cat's uh, second shootout goal? It seemed like there was some confusion as if it was a goal or not. What did you see? Uh, I think it was a goal. You know, the referees called it a goal, so it was a goal, you know. I don't think that made much difference in the outcome. They still, still scored two other goals, you know, in the shootout. So that's it. That breaks the game, you know. And the uh, referee called it, and he called it, you know. So... You know, that was okay. I don't think it affected the you know, no time. We didn't score after that. So, you know, so, you know, Petty played well, and, and, and uh, too bad you got to go down to that. You know, I feel, I feel bad for the goalie, you know, he's got to go into a shootout, you know. So if he stops, you know, if he stops all of them, so, you know, exactly. he lets one in, he, you know, it's too bad, really. You know. uh, so, Coach, uh, the Flyers are off this weekend, uh, which may be something at practice that you want to work on now since you, do, uh, since you guys do have a free weekend? Yeah, we won't be getting together practice-wise. It's, not, uh, not going to work. I think when we wait now until the following week and hopefully get the guys in for early morning skate or something like that, you know, maybe work on a few other things, you know. So, quite pleased with the weekend, you know. When you take a point out of a, out of a team that was last year, hurt us runners up and went to Allen Cup, you know, you're doing pretty well. And they added a lot of good players, too. Exactly, yeah, so, we're pretty good. Awesome. Thanks, Coach, for your time. We appreciate it. All right, Matt. That was Spencer that? Corcoran and Flyers head coach Dennis Lang right there. Right now, hockey fans, we have to take a quick commercial break. So make sure you get a new cup of coffee and come right back here because coming up next, we have the Flyers general manager and president, Mr. Gary White, for our featured interview. Stay right there. I'm Amy Purdy. At 19, I contracted bacterial meningitis. With less than a 2% chance to live, I slipped into a coma and lost both of my legs below the knee. Now I have lots of legs, and I feel lucky, lucky to be alive. So I can tell you, not all meningitis is the same. Not all vaccines are the same. Get the one that fully protects your child. The Meningitis Research Foundation of Canada can help. Now you know. This is Rogers TV, where local matters in Gander. We are back. The very, very first Flyers All Access show right here on Rogers TV. I'm your host, Matt Malloy. And since this is our very first show, we thought, why not bring in the man who's, who's actually responsible for bringing senior hockey back to Gander, Mr. Gary White, Gary, thanks for your, thanks for coming here today. We appreciate your time. My pleasure, Matt. First of all, Gary, just talk, uh, just talk about the set. What do you think of everything right oh, here? Oh, it's pretty good. There's, uh, I see some uh, cool hockey sticks there. I wish we be, could be utilizing the well, they're about, Saturday night. They're about twenty-five dollars sticks, Gary. That's so my I speed. I don't think, I think the boys are going to be using that one. So, Gary, um, I guess and everybody in Gander know they know who you are. Um, I guess and that they know why you're here with the Flyers. But some people might be surprised to know that you didn't actually <coughs> come here thinking about helping. With, uh, with senior hockey, you had uh, thoughts about maybe doing something with a younger team? That's correct, Matt. Uh, first when I moved here from Deer Lake, uh, I figured I was going to be leaving the senior ranks after spending seven or eight years here. I wanted to get back involved in Major Midget where I started back in the late 80s, early 90s. So for the late 80s and the 90s, I believe you were up in Labrador helping with the Huskies, is that correct? Well, it started out actually here in central Newfoundland uh, with the uh, team was based out of Lewisport and then we moved to the Grand Falls. 
Then I transferred for work reasons to uh, Labrador and I took on a manager role of Northern Huskies, that's correct. Oh, okay. So uh, just talk about your whole transition from going from major midget to senior hockey because you're dealing with two totally different types of players here. Uh, totally different types of players, not necessarily totally different types of mentality. Uh, still a pretty young team that we're dealing with. Uh, everybody likes to be treated like a professional, that's what we try to do as an organization. So dealing with young people and the older guys is not, is not a lot of difference to be quite honest with you. Gotcha. So uh, I don't know Gary if there was something about this major midget that actually attracted you. What, what's the whole appeal to major midget to you? Well, when I started out in minor hockey myself, I became the president of the uh, Minor Hockey Association in Lewisport. So I just evolved working with the uh, local Bantam division, local midget division, and then I uh, tried to challenge myself and take on something new. So what was that first challenge like? What was it like when you actually made that jump? Oh, it was excellent. Uh, no regrets, never regret. Uh, taking a, a young team on the road definitely got us challenges, and uh, like the young people do, they, uh, they were up to their antics. and. We had some discipline issues starting out, but it was worth it. Perfect. And of course, uh, you moved uh, to Gander from Deer Lake. Um, and uh, I believe you were telling me before that uh, you actually got the senior hockey itch again by watching the 2012 Herder. Uh, that, was a, that was a year that the Caribous won it. So uh, maybe just talk about what it was about that Herder that got you, I guess, scratching that itch again. Well, uh, like I say, you're, you're involved in senior hockey for uh, seven or eight years before moving there. And, and uh, quitting cold turkey was a little bit to get used to. And I found myself around the house waiting to go back to work uh, when I got off on Fridays instead of looking forward to the weekend. So uh, last spring I went to St. John's, the mild one, and watched a couple of games. And uh, it didn't take long before, yeah, this has got to go to Gander. And I got to be involved in it. So just tell us, what is the first thing that you have to do when you want to bring a senior team back into the mix? What are some of the first things that you have to do? Well, the very first thing you got to do is make sure the town is on board. Uh, it would be silly for me to go out and try to form a team and uh, put a group together only to find out that we couldn't gain access to the building. So uh, my very first plan was to meet with uh, the mayor of the town, the, uh, Kevin Waterman, the recreation director of the day, and Gary Brown, their, their financial guru, and sat down and discuss what we would need as an organization to proceed from day one to the start of the season. And uh, luckily they've agreed to everything we've asked for and they've been totally supportive of us. That support is obviously crucial to any senior hockey team, but what is the first couple of things that you have to do to find players? I mean, they're not all from Gander. You have guys from all around the province, a uh, guy from PEI, Nova Scotia. You have them from everywhere. So uh, maybe just take a few minutes and talk about how you find these players. Facebook. Facebook, Facebook <laughs> is the social media, I will tell you. Uh, after being involved with, uh, with the Deer Lake Red Wings uh, since about 2003, 2004, you get to, uh, to network with a lot of different individuals. And uh, for instance, Chad Locke, uh, we've been pursuing him for the last three or four years out of Deer Lake. He was uh, coming to us from the University of PEI in Charlottetown. Uh, so that was one of the first places I started. And then just growing on people that he knew and uh, basically send the messages and just looking for feedback. Of course, I too, Gary, for this team, you have a really young team to work with. I think the oldest guy on the team might be 32 or 33 years old, so you have, a, you have a really young team. So I'm wondering if that was your plan from the start to form such a young team. Of course. Uh, when we entered into Newfoundland Senior Hockey, uh, the way they decided to uh, let us come in in a, in a new year was uh, they permitted the previous five teams to protect all their senior players. So now we're going down to 125 players who's already uh, captured that was of senior caliber, so where do you start? And of course, we're gonna be looking to uh, Maritime Junior A, Quebec Major Junior, uh, AUS, and we knew right from day one, it had to be a young team. We're looking at building to the future, so it didn't make any sense to go out and get uh, players in the mid to late 30s at this point in time for our infancy. Now, uh, I guess since the year started, you've been one of the busier, uh, I guess, GMs in this league. And of course, recently you brought in uh, two players, you brought in Mitch Flynn, and you also uh, brought in Tyler Whitehead. Uh, so first talk about Tyler a bit, just because it seems like that move was pretty big for you guys. He's like a point per game player, even a bit more than that. So uh, just talk about where you hope he fits into the Flyers lineup. Well, uh, for the people that don't believe in Santa Claus, I tell you, there is one, because we were just handed a major Christmas gift here at uh, Tyler Whitehead. Uh, we're looking for leadership both on and off the ice with Tyler. Uh, he's a very aggressive player, and he's a two-way player. If we want to play center, wing, or even back on the point, 
this is an all-around guy, and uh, we're looking for big things from Tyler. And for Mitch, of course, now, uh, I think last year he was slated in at about 6 foot, 235 pounds. The rumor has it he might even be a bit bigger this year. So is he going to be this big bruising uh, guy back on the point for you guys? Is that what you hope from him? Uh, no, I don't want to say we want a big bruiser back on the point, but we want, definitely want a physical presence. We want somebody that's going to be able to intimidate the opponent, of course and somebody that's going to protect their blue line and ultimately protect our goaltender. Perfect. And I also wanted to ask you this, Gary. I couldn't wait to ask you this question, actually. Uh, just take the fans back, I guess, uh, back behind the scenes. How does a trade happen when it comes to senior <laughs> hockey? How does that happen? Uh, I don't know if you're calling other GMs. Are they calling you? Or is it back to Facebook again? Uh, no, it's usually on the phone. And it's, uh, for lack of a better term, there's a lot of bickering back and forth. And, and you take a player that you don't think is going to fit into your team and offer them to another general manager and just see what you can get from them. And, and usually it's not done overnight. It'll probably take three or four days before you get the final trade worked out. Um, I caught the, the game on the 28th where you guys played the Cataracts, and that was the big debut weekend for Spencer Corcoran. Uh, he's another brand new player for you guys. He lied a lot of minutes. So uh, just talk about what you see from Spencer so far this season uh, after two games. Spencer has been a great addition. He came at, uh, to us from uh, AUS, uh, playing with the University of New Brunswick for three years. Uh, he's got a lot of technical knowledge with the game. Uh, he's got a physical presence in the game. He's got excellent leadership skills in the dressing room and on the bench as well. So, like I say, we picked up a, a, a top-notch defenseman all around. And, Gary, I have to ask you, since you are a pretty busy GM, are you working on anything else now for the Flyers? Are you looking to improve in certain areas? Are you... I don't know if there's anything up in your, um, maybe up in your head that you want to do. Uh, you really don't want to get inside my head when it comes to <laughs> hockey. We're, uh, we're constantly chatting about uh, where we need additions. And it's, it's an evolving uh, team. And we know right from day one that the product you start with is definitely not going to be the product you're going to end with. So, of course, we're looking every day and analyzing players every game to make sure they're the right fit for our team and our organization. Uh, I guess, Gary, from the ice uh, up to the boardroom, what are the Flyers looking for now? Are you guys looking for any help uh, through volunteers, anybody to help sell 50-50 tickets? What are you looking forward uh, for now just in, um, in terms of, I guess, running the whole thing? Well, people who have been following us from day one uh, might get sick and tired of us saying we need volunteers. But uh, it's reality. This, uh, this organization is a volunteer organization. Hockey is not going to survive in the town of Gannett without volunteers. Uh, we need them. Everything from sitting on the executive to uh, picking guys up from the uh, airport wow. at night, selling 50-50, going to the malls and selling tickets. It's, it's everything from the ground up. There's no job that's too small that's going to be helping out the team. Perfect. And of course, now, Gary, this weekend we're going to bring the Cats back into town. What's it going to take for the Flyers to beat A.J. Whiffin? How do you beat this goalie? He's red hot right now. Shoot the puck. <laughs> uh, this is a lot of criticisms we're getting uh, on the ice and off the ice that uh, we don't seem to be shooting the puck enough. A.J. Whiffen, as everybody knows, is a top-notch goaltender, but like any other goaltender, he can be beat. Uh, we're going to have to start uh, putting the puck at him a little bit more. We're going to have to leave a man in the high slot in order to pick up a lot of rebounds. I think uh, if the fans uh, would take note of the games that they've played so far, uh, he's good on his high shots, but uh, when he get down low, he's letting out a lot of major rebounds. Perfect. And of course now, uh, fans, Saturday and Sunday here in Gander. Saturday night at 7.30 and Sunday at 1.30. Gary, thanks a lot for joining us. We appreciate it. Quite welcome. Stay tuned. We're going to cut the break, and we have one final segment coming up. Welcome back, everybody, to the very first Flyers All Access show right here on Rogers TV. I'm your host, Matt Malloy, and we want your feedback, but I want you to be nice. This is my first time trying to host a TV show, so don't be too hard on me. You can reach our feedback line at 651-3257. And we also want to make sure that you guys follow the Gander Flyers on Twitter and like them on Facebook. So the Flyers are back in action again this weekend against the Grand Falls Windsor Cataracts. Saturday night's game starts at 7.30.
while Sundays start at 1.30. And there's two ways that fans can buy tickets. If you want to buy your tickets online, starting tomorrow, which is November the 9th, if you go to www.gandercanada.tix.com, you can get all of your online tickets there. Or if you want to get your tickets at the box office, make sure that you get to the box office an hour and a half before game time. So on Saturday night, if you want your tickets at the box office, make sure you're there by 6 o'clock. And for your tickets on Sunday, make sure you're there by 12 noon. And also for Sunday's game, the Flyers are going, are, are going to be honoring our veterans, both past and present, with a very special ceremony. Coming up next for the NLSHL, they'll have another draft on the 14th of November. So come back here again next Thursday for the full results of that draft. Now once again, my name is Matt Malloy. I am the sports editor for The Beacon, so I get to give a shameless plug. Make sure you pick up today's Beacon, where you can find a way to get free tickets for the next home game for the Gander Flyers, which will come at November 24th and the 25th against the Clarenville Caribous. And also make sure when you pick up the Beacon, I'm going to have articles in there about straight shore biathics, about four local figure skaters who are going to sectionals, and we also have other stories in there jam-packed with sports, Volley Central, Volley Fest, whatever you need. So I'm your host, Matt Malloy. Thank you so much for joining us here at the Flyers All Access Show. We will see you back here again next week. Good night, everybody.